The film opens at a man's office with his girlfriend, Yeni Kahl's mother, who asks to examine his art collection. Polpi and Zampano discuss it from the building's rooftop, and Yeni Kahl climbs it to turn off the ventilation system after her partner has left. The man shows the mother his art collection and reveals a safe containing valuables. The mother pretends to be awry, but records the code. She hides the gadget and places her gum on the laser machine before leaving. Using the ventilation system, Yenikal enters the room, inserts a code, finds the treasure, and returns to the office through the window. The laser's alarm goes off abruptly. When security arrives to investigate, they discover gum on the laser, prompting the guy to request that the girl and her mother not leave the premises until security checks their belongings. The mother tells him it'll be the last time he'll see her daughter if they proceed with the search. When he sees the chief replacement, he tells his guys to check their bags. They don't find anything valuable, but Yenikal breaks up with him. Yenikal, her fake mother, chewing gum, and the rest of the robbery crew discuss splitting a small sum for a luxurious product since it's under radar and needs to cool before sale. Investigators arrive and Pulpy greets guests while the others remain hidden inside. One of the men begins to smoke and mistakenly utilizes the bottom half of the pricey object on the table as an ashtray. They show Pulpy CCTV footage of the two ladies in the building during the robbery and call the phone of chewing gum, the woman pretending to be Yenikal's mother. She left her phone on the table, so when it starts ringing, the men get suspicious that Pulpy is involved. He starts panicking out and demands a search warrant. The man says he simply wants the curator and will come back with a warrant the next day. As soon as the officers leave, the crew leaves the hideout. Pulpy sends Yenikal to pick up Pepsi from prison. Pepsi joins the crew and confronts Poppy about taking charge. Poppy explains he can only lead after the Macau job. Pepsi seeks revenge on Macau, and Poppy agrees they share the same goal. The setting shifts to a casino, where Macau is asked to leave because he has been blacklisted. He contacts a man named Chen, who is robbing a jewelry store in Hong Kong. Two officers arrive in response to an alarm. The criminals pretend to work there and claim it was an accident, but the officers want to use the restroom anyhow. Before giving the officer his coffee, the waitress writes the word, help on a piece of tissue paper. Andrew, the robber next to her, sees it and blows it away while pretending to sneeze. After stealing the money, the group waits on the shore for a girl to join their team. This is the Chinese team, and they are about to join forces with Pulpy's Korean team. The two teams meet at a restaurant, but one of the Chinese players, Andrew, irritates Yanikal. She splashes hot liquid on his face and walks out to smoke. Macau approaches her, and she recognizes him based on the smell of his liquor. Macau Kao joins her and begins his speech. He asks Chen to show him the guns. He discards the large and heavy ones and gives them two that are easier to handle. He tells them that they will be robbing a casino and that their target is a diamond called Tear of the Sun. Pulpy informs Macau that he has recruited two old friends to join his team, revealing chewing gum and Pepsi in the next room. Macau does not like seeing Pepsi and requests that Pulpy speak with him alone. He tells him he doesn't mind chewing gum on the heist, but he has to send Pepsi back. Back inside, they mention Wei Hong. He is a Chinese fencer and the diamond's notorious owner. He can be identified by a butterfly tattoo on his hand, but no one's seen his face and lived to talk about it. Macau, however, claims to have seen him before. The following day, an elegant woman shows up at the meeting spot. She provides Macau and the others with specifics regarding the safe, such as its location on the 31st floor and its 360 degree camera guidance. According to her, nobody else enters the room except for a woman named Tiffany, who she claims is her stepsister. Julie from the Chinese team installs a device in Macau's lighter. At night, she prepares to listen in on his conversations, but he is alone. The scene shifts to four years ago in Seoul. Macau, Pepsi, and Pulpy are on a mission to steal some gold. Pulpy sits in the getaway car. Macau kisses Pepsi, who advises him to be responsible for a woman's heart. His wire is severed as she lowers him, and she panics, thinking he has fallen. Ignoring Pulpy, she rushes into the main area of the building to see if he is alright. This triggers the alarms, and Pepsi finds herself facing the cameras as the cops arrive. Three days later, Macau's location remains unknown. Pulpy tells Pepsi that Macau abandoned them and took the gold. The scene returns to the present. Pepsi enters Macau's room, asking why he won't let her in the job. He says it is because she is not the best safecracker. 
He asks her to crack a safe on his luggage in five seconds. She says she can do it in three and tears it open with her knife. He tells her it doesn't work that way, but lets her anyway. Pepsi returns to Poppy with the South Asian fence list from Macau. They intend to steal the diamond for themselves. Yenikal is spying on them through the window, but flees when she is about to be caught. The scene returns to Seoul two weeks after the heist. Pepsi's face has been all over TV since she was caught on camera, but there has been no sign of Macau. Poppy kisses Pepsi but she is too hurt and requests that he take her to the police the following day. The group is photographed from afar as they walk through Macau streets in the morning. They enter a garage and set up the plan. First, Chewing Gum and Chen pretend to be a couple and enter the casino with a large amount of money. Andrew looks around the hotel, but security will not let him go very far because they only allow room service. When Madame Tiffany arrives in Macau with Wei Hong's diamond, Pulpy alerts the others from afar. Yeni Kal and Zampano join forces to obtain the general manager's master key to the floor where the diamonds are located. Yeni Kal tries to use her charms again this time, but in a turn of events, the man is gay and more interested in Zampano. Yeni Kal steals the general manager's key as he is seduced, and the two leave. Andrew is tasked with bribing one of the waitstaff into bringing a gun into the casino. After a few attempts, he finally finds someone willing to help. He pretends to bring Andrew food, but instead hands him the gun bag. Four days ago, Julie from Chen's team was in the middle of a meeting board, teaching cops how to break into safes. She tells them that trying to enter the safe from the back is the dumbest idea because there is a high risk of permanently closing it. Following the meeting, an inspector tells her that she needs to track down Wei Hong, for whom the police cannot even obtain a mugshot. Julie advises Pepsi to try to get through the safe from the back, but Pepsi ignores her advice because she is so used to using the front. Yeni Kal approaches them and informs them that they will not be able to pass through a 12mm safe due to its thickness. Chewing Gum tells Pepsi that once she finishes this job, she intends to marry and live a normal life, paying taxes like everyone else. She tells Pepsi it's clear that she still likes Macau. Chen's group decides at night that Macau's plan is doomed to fail and that they should focus on obtaining Tiffany's money. On the day of the plan, Macau and Poppy pretend to fight in the table suite to get the attention of those watching the cameras. Chen tells Chewing Gum about his previous theft of a diamond. Wei Hong killed the man next to him because he refused to speak before the flame burned out. Chewing Gum makes him feel better and the two become romantically involved. At church, Pepsi and Macau cross paths. She questions him about their relationship and why he abandoned her. After giving her a hazy response, he departs. The mission begins, and they have 10 minutes to carry it out. Macau is forced to wait for them at the exit because he has been blacklisted from the casino. The group terrorizes the security room and turns off all the cameras. They also disable phone signals, making it impossible for hotel guests to communicate. Pepsi and Poppy successfully open the safe. Chen and Chewing Gum place their final bets with Madame Tiffany, and she wins. Chen jumps up on the table and pulls out a gun, instructing Chewing Gum to grab the cash. A security guard sends a distress signal. Pepsi opens the safe successfully, but it only contains cash. Julie opens the other one, but it is empty. The safe is revealed to be sealed in the panic room where the waiter who sneaked the gun in steals the diamond. Macau texts the team, saying he will meet with Wei Hong himself and expresses gratitude for everything they have done. Everyone begins to move, shocked by the betrayal. Yeni Kal is held back by security and Zampano diverts their attention away from her by fleeing. He is caught in the process. Andrew is also arrested for not having an identification. Poppy and Pepsi, along with Julie, flee the elevator in disguise, but are apprehended when Andrew stops resisting at the sight of them. Chen and Chewing Gum have a shootout in the parking lot, but they jack a car and flee. In the car, as they declare their love for each other, she notices that he is bleeding. He goes unconscious, and the two of them crash and die. Pepsi picks the lock on the other's cuff with her hairpin while they are being delivered to the station. Before she can break free, the others begin attacking the cops, forcing her to drop the pin. The car nearly hits the water, but the cops chase Andrew and Poppy away. Pepsi, still cuffed inside, dives into the water and nearly drowns before being rescued by a mysterious figure. 
Pepsi awakens alone somewhere and travels to see Poppy. He is sorry for leaving her behind. The rest of the team talks about how to get back at Macau for stabbing them in the back. Macau removes the old man's face costume and calls Wei Hong, offering to sell the diamond back to him. They identify the woman they met in Hong Kong as Tiffany's stepsister, but she turns out to be a vet. She declines to answer their questions, claiming that she lives and dies for loyalty. But when they threaten to kill her beloved dog, she reveals Macau's location. Macau is also under police surveillance. They even collaborate with the Korean detective who visited Pulpy a few days prior. Yenikal and Pepsi break into Macau's room and search his belongings, but find nothing. Pepsi checks the next room and discovers his passport. She is able to overhear the conversation between the woman and Macau regarding his decision to save Pepsi from drowning. He tells her that he had to spend a fortnight crawling through the sewer because he broke his leg during the soul heist. And by the time he came back, he saw her and Pulpy kissing. After hearing everything, Pepsi discovers the diamond on the light bulb. Emotionally, she questions Pulpy if he cut Macau's string that day. He dodges the question, which proves her point. Macau overhears the conversation through the woman's mic. Pepsi abandons Yenikal and apologizes to Macau for not believing him. She also thanks him for saving her life. Yenikal, knowing the diamond is in that room, finds a way in and removes it from the bulb before leaving. The men from Macau and Wei Hong enter the room. Macau informs Wei Hong that the man he killed next to Chen was actually his father. As this is taking place, a SWAT team arrives, and Julie is instructed to secure the exit. Macau flees through the window as a group of men shoot him. Pulpy is hiding on top of the elevator, but Yenikal doubts him now after hearing what she has heard. Wei Hong's men pursue Macau, but lose track of them, only to be apprehended by police. Yenikal throws the diamond to Pulpy and tells him to wait for her downstairs. Macau finally confronts Pulpy for cutting the wire, but he simply blames it on his theft habit. Macau walks away, and only Julie notices him and tries to intervene, but he escapes. Pulpy pretends not to hear Yenikal on the mic, but is chased by Andrew. He is hit by a car, and when a bike smashes the diamond, they realize it is fake. Yenikal replaced the one in the bulb with another counterfeit replica. Before boarding the ferry, Macau runs into Pepsi, but changes course when he notices Wei Hong approaching her. Julie arrests Pepsi, but before she can hand her over, she notices Wei Hong shooting at Macau and kills him. The scene shifts to Pepsi opening her car trunk to discover several grams of gold within. She flies to see Yenikal, who is yet to sell the diamond because she does not have the fence list. She offers to help her. Macau calls Pepsi and says he will see her, but there is one more thing he needs to steal. The end. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.